Okay, so today I'm going to be reviewing the Marvel Legends Demo Goblin Builder figure. Now, in order to build this figure, you had to buy six individual figures uh, from this wave to make him up. And this is often the problem with the Builder figures, is that very often you will have to be committed to throwing down about £120 in the UK um, to, to build one of these figures. Um, and you've got to ask yourself whether, you know, is it worth that price tag? And sometimes that's an easy decision to make if the every figure in the wave is one that you want. And certainly that does happen from time to time. But very often you'll get a wave like this where, you know, speaking from my own personal opinion, uh, there was only really uh, three figures in this wave that I wanted. I wanted the Vulture, Shang-Chi, um, and Superior Octopus. And I can't imagine uh, there's many people who'd be really keen to get hold of a White Rabbit figure. Um, as it happens, I actually quite like that figure. I think it's actually well made and it's, uh, you know, it's bright and colourful and that's always a plus. But it's not a character that I was uh, keen to get hold of, to be honest. And as for the Spider-Man variants, again, doesn't particularly speak to me, um, but I appreciate obviously people are different. But ultimately, you are you are left with that question: is, is do I want to commit to buying all these figures to, to uh, collect this bath? And for me, the Demon Goblin is one of those characters that I've just I've always really liked the uh, the design of and the character. Um, I've, I'm a proper '90s fan, as uh, where I got into comics. So um, this is definitely you know it was a, it was a must buy for me. Now I should point out that there actually is another uh, d version of the Demon Goblin available from the, the Toy Biz years, uh, which is sort of under the Marvel Legends banner. But as you can see, it's quite a cool looking figure, it's definitely very stylized, um, but I think it really captures the essence of the character there. Um, I never actually had this figure myself, uh, but I did have one very similar, which used the same mould, uh, which is the demonic Hobgoblin which was a story arc that came about as a result of uh, the Inferno X-Men crossover. But that's a whole other story. Back to Hasbro's version of the Demo Goblin. The question is, is he worth buying the whole way for? Now, those of you who've already purchased the Hobgoblin or the Green Goblin that Hasbro have produced over the last few years will recognise a lot of the elements uh, of this figure uh, have, have being retooled. But that, that is entirely appropriate for the characters, so uh, I have no problems with that whatsoever. Uh, but what we can see is a little modifications they've made for the Emo Goblin, uh, such as the torn gauntlets, uh, the, the, the bottom of the belt piece with the little details of the skull, um, and of course, you know, it, it, we've got the hands as well, the clawed hands. Uh, but I think, you know, absolute key is, is the head sculpt, which they've just done a fantastic job on. The, the detailing on the tongue and the fangs, and the paint apps on the on the eyes and round the round the the gums there it just looks awesome and this carries over into the base it's as well uh which you can see the different colors there to really give that flame effect and i think that looks really really cool and again there's just some nice detail in there as you can say the little, the little skull on the belt particularly is really nice and the fact that they're colored in the belt buckle i think looks really good uh, again there's a close-up there on the detail of the hands maybe a bit more color would have been nice there in the gauntlet the chain and then the fingernails perhaps but um I'm, I'm not too worried about that and as you can see that the detail and the tears in the cape look look really good and his glider is that translucent plastic so it, you hold up to the light and it shines through and it just it looks again just really great now, in terms of the articulation, this is pretty much what you'd expect from any of any uh, Marvel Legends figure in this scale, uh, the six-inch scale. So he does have the standard uh, ball-jointed shoulders and the uh, the, the double-jointed elbows and knees, and of course, you know, bicep swivels. Um, now, pleasingly, none of this is hindered by his cape, so you can get a full dynamic range of poses out of the arms there. The, the cape is a sort of soft plastic that allows you to be quite flexible, which is fantastic. Um, likewise, obviously, when it comes to the wrist, that you can get full 360 degree rotation, you can bend them up and down all the way. Um, and those hands always look really dramatic, so no matter what pose you've got them in, it always looks great. Now in terms of the head, uh, you can swivel it from side to side easily enough, no problems there. However, when it comes to moving it up and down, uh, much more limited. That's when it really is restricted by the, 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 the cape around the throat there. Um, he obviously does have the ab crunch there, so he can bend forward quite a bit and he can bend back pretty much, yeah, a, a good amount. He can swivel at the waist uh, from side to side there. Again, there's no real... Uh, 
hindrance from the, the belt or anything like that, so um, that's pleasing. And really, it doesn't matter what position you put him in, he's always going to look really dramatic because of that sculpt with the hands and the face. So again, the leg articulation is what you'd hope to have. It's obviously he's got the um, the calf swivel there. Uh, he's got the ankle pivot, and pleasingly the foot can go forwards quite a bit and all the way back there. So yeah, again, you've got a wide range of uh, positions you can put him in there. That and he'll he'll always look striking. And likewise, the upper legs uh, are exactly the same. They, they go all the way forwards up there. They've got the thigh swivel uh, and, of course, the double-jointed knees uh, that can get a really great range of uh, motion. So in terms of articulation, couldn't really ask for more. Top marks. Now, he does come with, uh, obviously, his glider, uh, which is on a stand that they provide, uh, which is nice. It, it's a nice touch that they provide this, and it does have uh, a nice ball joint there, so that, it, again, it should, in theory, allow for a, a great range of motion. The problem is, he doesn't balance very well on it. Uh, if you're not careful, if you don't have it weighted exactly right, this happens. Uh, and it can take a lot of fiddling. You really, you have to balance it just spot on in the middle to pivot. If you angle it any other way, it's just not going to hold. Um, and that can be very frustrating, uh, especially if you've got him in a display and he's standing up and then pff, that happens. So here he is standing next to the Green Goblin figure that was released last year as part of the Spider-Man wave. Um, as you can see, the Green Goblin is uh, a lot more colourful, more vibrant, uh, whereas the Demon Goblin has a much darker colour palette. Um, again, that's spot on in terms of the comics. And it provides a nice contrast between the two characters as well. So yeah, they, they, they look fantastic together. So then, summing up, I absolutely adore the head sculpt. I think it's fantastic. I think there's a lot of detailing in there. And it doesn't really matter what you do with him because he's always going to look really dramatic and, and really on note. So uh, yeah, I think top marks for the, for, the, for the presentation of the character I think is great. However, what I would say is there is something about the arms in particular that feel very delicate. Uh, it feels like there's quite a lot of resistance there, and is it, it, sometimes it feels like you might be on the verge of snapping the joints, which makes me feel a little uncomfortable, to be honest. Likewise, the uh, issues with the glider, um, although I really love that they've given it a display stand so that you can stand out and look really dramatic, I just don't feel that the stand is really strong enough to hold him. Um, obviously, you know, you're dealing with a figure that's going to essentially be top heavy and it's, got all, it's going to be working against gravity the more it leans over. Uh, but I feel like if it had a, a more solid uh, display stand, um, then it, it could have supported that. So um, as a result, obviously, he does constantly fall over um, unless he's weighted just exactly right, which does limit um, the amount of positions you can have him in um, and can lead to some... Um, nasty accidents if you've got them out on display with other figures, uh, which is a real, real shame. So overall, for me, I'd probably give this figure a 3 out of 5. Uh, I, like I said, I love the sculpt, I think he looks great, um, but uh, there are issues there that are just uh, f very frustrating. Um, and again, when you, when you think about the amount of money that you're spending to sort of build a figure like this, um, you either have to be an absolute diehard fan of the character, or want all the other figures in the wave to make them worthwhile. Uh, I certainly wouldn't spend £120 for this figure alone, but if you can assemble him for cheaper than that, or you can pick him up uh, cheaper on the secondary market, then um, I think he's you know he will make a nice addition to your collection. Um, or, likewise, if you're just a, a huge Demon Goblin fan, or you want to just fill out your, your Spider-Man collection with his entire rogues gallery, um, then I, I, I think you'll be pleased with this figure. I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, please do give it a like uh, and remember to subscribe as I'll be posting more videos soon.